Warren Buffett has just announced his annual charitable donations. Jeff Bezos named Forbes as richest man in the world last year with a wealth valued at $160 billion. Well, he gave nearly $150 million to charitable causes. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg promising to give away 99% of his shares of the company to charity. We all know how generous our millionaires and billionaires are. We all can agree that it's generosity which makes the rich open their own foundation for charity? Or is the label generosity just a ticket to hide the dark truth of private foundations? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, they, they, uh, <laughs> they didn't result in... Uh, The benefits of the Family Foundation reach into more areas of your life than you would ever imagine. There are tax savings, there's impact in the world that you want to see, there's legacy. Yes, these foundations might help this way, but there's a question which keeps them popping in our head and makes everyone think again. Why are rich getting richer than ever? There are many foundations rich can donate to individually. But what makes them open their own foundation and donate a huge chunk of their wealth? Do they not trust other foundations? Or is this all lie to escape huge taxes? Private foundations might have benefited the public in many ways, like charity functions, helping the needy, or holding evas for specific costs. Happening here, the Endometriosis Foundation of Rhode Island, along with Alex and Ani, are holding an event to raise awareness and funds. Nobody had an issue with that. People appreciate the foundation waters for holding such activities. It's benefiting the public along with the honors too. There will be a list of benefits for the honor. You can hire family members as staff. It does reduce your taxable income. You have pretty much complete control over the investments. You can work for the foundation once you retire. The main point where public concern rises, perhaps majority of people may need answers to that. How he may run this charitable organization. How easy is it to actually direct money effectively? That lots of people give to charity, but it's not successful because the charities aren't actually very effective at spending money. So I clicked YouTube with a hope to find answers and searched up how does a rich donate effectively. I came across a video by Wax, which explained pretty much everything. How America's riches donate their money. The weird thing I noticed was although the rich are making many donations, but the majority of donations go direct into their private foundations and there are barely any rich folks who donate individually to other nonprofit organizations. They have no reporting or payout requirements, so it's difficult to tell whether the money is going somewhere good or just lowering the donor's tax bill. Let's say we consider all of this hypothetical. We want a solid, official understanding on how private foundations do more good to the owners than taxpayers. I typed how private foundations help bridge a white tax and boom, came across this article, which clearly states, reduce your income tax, avoid capital gain taxes, eliminate potential estate taxes, We have a list of rich faces who made the world a better place by donating to their own private foundation. There was just a little bit of twist. The money was never spent for that cause. Uncovering Nicholas Woodman, the owner of GoPro, who donated half a billion dollar to not just any, but his own Jill and Nicholas Foundation. He was labeled as America's most generous donor. However, within a few years, reporters noticed that there were no official traces of the money. When you search up Jill and Nicholas Foundation, surprisingly, you will see no result, no website, no advertisement. Besides, why wouldn't the foundation show the world their wonderful ways to help the surroundings? The benefit of donating that money can't be seen for the needy, but it's clear for the Woodman's family. At least they escape huge taxes. Imagine having a mansion and giving a penny as tax for this massive piece of land. Unwrapping the selfish yet clever move of billionaire Charles Johnson. 
He has been donating thousands throughout, but when it came to paying taxes for a historic mansion in Hilbrook, it took him a second to donate the mansion to his private foundation. It filed an image tax exemption. In 2013, Charles Johnson opened doors of his mansion to public. This was because he had donated to his own private foundation and had to make a good use of the mansion in an educational and charitable way. Their file for tax exemption was return of two benefits. A self-guided tour, mansion open on weekdays from 9 till 5. Although the plan was a great success, because he and his wife own a mansion and still got away from all sort of taxes. Also, they saved $38 million in tax saving from estate and surprisingly didn't have to pay taxes for 5 years, which would be 5 times the original price of the mansion. But there were some complaints. Johnson and his wife never allowed the public to visit the mansion during during the weekdays, and even when they started the weekday shift, the public was only allowed for 40 hours every week. The foundation had been shrinking the size of accessibility, and they have finally concluded at a two-hour tour to only a couple of lottery ticket winners, the ultra-rich. They had been generating millions of tax money while enjoying luxury materials. The Linjin Guahua Foundation is a perfect example. By early 2000s, Winnie Zhang Miller and Sandy Miller generated $5.6 million worth of tax from donating. He's an investor billionaire. By 2017, Sandy Miller and investor cashed in foundations stopped to buy a museum space for Chinese paintings they had gathered. The Linjin Guahua Foundation had the main cost to display Chinese paintings to the public and encourage paintings that revolve around the Chinese culture. They promoted the art of painting in China. However, when they finally had enough funds to buy the space, they opted for a $3.1 million house nearby their own estate in Woodside. If they wanted to display it for public, they should have opted for a busy public place accessible to people. Sandy's wife, Winnie Miller, emphasized on how important it is to hold a short showing hours instead of long ones. And according to her, the main way to access the artwork was through lawns only. The foundation had made to universities, museums, and galleries. People and reporters had one major concern. Why are they not allowing public to easily reach the museum? Why are they only expecting private guests there? While this controversy was heating up, Sandy mentioned in an email, please be advised that I'm not married to Winnie and that I have no involvement with the Linjin Guahua Foundation. According to the records, Winnie had filed for divorce from him in 2019. Sandy seems to be listed as a president of the foundation. The museum that was purchased with the foundation's tax exempt funds never actually opened, and that foundation held a home as an investment instead. Our question is, for how long will the rich take advantage of their wealth and not only escape taxes but also make themselves famous for being generous? Let us know your thoughts on this in the comments. These acts would ultimately lead them to the hatred. This reminds me of an ice cream company who faced billions of dollars lost in shares and is now hated by the world. Find out the real reason behind that hatred by watching our previous video. Make sure to subscribe and like this video.